Aquí mi mamá murió en mis brazos a los siete años. Eh, cuando, yo, cuando yo le conté que mi papá no era mi papá porque me acariciaba y le decía, mami, mami, no puede ser, mami, porque bueno, cuando ella amaba mucho a mi papá y me amaba mucho a mí, me quería mucho. Cuando ella se dio de cuenta que ese era cierto, terminó por quitarse la vida. Yo consumí delante de ellos, ellos lloraban y me decían, mamá, usted ya no es de Dios, usted es del demonio, usted es del diablo. Yo consumía marihuana, bazooka, cocaína, alcohol. I took some trucks and I went out to the streets. And that was back in 1994. I was scared to death. I didn't know really what I was doing that. And I started talking to this homeless guy. And then after maybe 15 minutes we pray, I hear some noise and I open my eyes and I saw other homeless people surrounding me, standing up. And I thought honestly that uh, that was the end of my life. I saw one guy and he said, uh, will you pray for us as well? And God moved that night not only in the lives of the homeless people, but also in my own life. And I believe a ministry was birthed. So we're going to an industrial area called Nikki Tao. Um, and the reason why the homeless gather here is because it is an industrial area, there's nobody here generally at night. So they can sell, use their drugs, and sleep on the street, and basically nobody bothers them. The street is an incredible stronghold. And our goal is just to get them to come to the foundation even once. Because uh, once they get themselves out of the street, it seems like it breaks that spirit that holds them. Uh, so we have a chance to maybe even minister to them a little bit more. La guapanela con pan, la guapanela con pan. Hagan la filita, por favor. Gracias. Yo le pague a mi señora. Caballero, ¿cómo estás? Bien, sí, Estando yo durmiendo en la calle, ellos llegaron a repartir la guapanela y por medio de ese ministerio, bueno, y la fundación que ellos me invitaron a que yo viniera y conociera las instalaciones. Some of them they don't need a rehab center, they just need a place to sleep. Others they come for the shelter, but also they have um, uh, drug addiction problems or alcohol problems and uh, we just sit down with them and we invite them to come into the program which uh, it lasts a year. We have an incredible, incredible success rate where if a man comes in and is willing to dedicate and stay in the program for the full year, 70 percent of them do not return to drugs uh, and do not uh, get back involved with the violence. The women's program is um, again a year length. The women generally are preparing the food for the entire foundation. Uh, they also have their teaching, their prayer and their fasting throughout the day. A very effective uh, program in ministering to the women and being able again to share the love of Christ. Ellas vienen no solamente heridas de su alma, sino que hay muchas que tienen problemas psiquiátricos. Me decía Mato y era la loca. Me mandaron para una granja psiquiátrica de locos crónicos. Una historia demasiado triste porque fue muy maltratada y violada muchas veces por, hasta por su propio padre en formas horribles. Le dije a los cuatro vientos doble rodillas, si es verdad que tú existe, sácame de aquí a un lugar a donde te pueda conocer y servirte a ti. Para la gloria de Dios, al otro día me trajeron acá. Es una mujer muy valiente, ella maneja la cocina. Es la única mujer en estos ocho años, en estos seis años que tengo mujeres, que ha sabido manejar solita todo eso. Working with these people, we saw the need that uh, uh, just preaching the gospel to them was crucial, but it was not enough. I had the bad experience of uh, seeing some guys finish the program and backsliding because they couldn't find a job. 
they couldn't, they didn't have any skills. So that's why we came up with the idea of designing the bakery and the restaurant. Uh, we have a rotisserie also as well. We also have a working farm where we have pigs. We also have chickens uh, that we raise to be able to provide food for the program, but also eggs for the bakery. We also have a program with Ricard, one of the nephews of the owners, went through the program. The transformation that occurred in his life was so impressive to the owner, he said, what can we do to help? And with that, we started a little bit of a relationship. It started initially maybe just helping them uh, recycle some of their cardboard. Then it went into the idea of maybe we could help them with maybe some volunteers. So we started sending people there to be trained for free. Then he started paying the foundation, giving donations to the foundation, and now he's hiring people from the foundation. We have about four or five guys that they finish the program. They're already full-time working there. Antes, yo no, a mí no me gustaba trabajar, me gustaba todo fácil sin que yo tuviera que mover un dedo. Y ahora empiezo a ver que, que la vida no era eso. Ahora vengo a un lugar donde soy un empleado, pero tengo que hacer una labor que disfruto. In addition to that, we have a, a, a taxi, where we have one of the men who graduated from the program a little over two years ago, who is now working a taxi, which brings funds back into the foundation also. Aprendí a tener responsabilidad que que era irresponsable, la plata me volvía irresponsable porque cuando conseguía con plata y mismo iba a, a consumir. Ya no consumo porque llevo 30 meses en la fundación. All these little different micro enterprises come together, yes, to bring financial support to the foundation, but to go that extra mile to provide some level of restoration financially, job-wise, um, and uh, income producing to the individual and also to the family. With all of that being said, at the heart and at the center of that being Jesus Christ. I think one of the most difficult things for me was um, just sometimes I saw people's reaction, uh, the rejection, saying that uh, I was crazy, that it was a waste of time and money just to invest in the homeless people, or displaced people. But I knew it was from God, so I kept pressing on. It's very easy in the day-to-day -to, -day to become very discouraged. And to say, is it even worth it? Uh, but when we get to that point, and we see the faithfulness of God, and we see the restored lives, that's more than anybody could ask, and it's the greatest encouragement, is just to see one changed life, and we see so many down here.